If you're into Korean media or know a few Koreans, you may have noticed that a lot of Korean family names are Kim, Lee, or Park. This can come off as a bit jarring to some people from cultures where family names are more diverse. Is Kim Jong-un related to BTS member Kim Namjoon? Is IU, real name Lee Ji-un, a descendant of the royal Lee dynasty of Joseon? These may not be questions you've wondered, but I'm going to explain why Korean family names are not as diverse as family names from other East Asian countries. At a glance, you may have noticed that Korean surnames resemble Chinese surnames. This is because throughout the Silla period and the Goryeo period, important people such as government officials and royalty began using Chinese-styled surnames. China during this time was a big cultural influence to their neighboring countries, with Korea not being an exception. Having a Chinese-styled surname was a statement of one's importance, especially during a period where commoners did not have surnames at all. This doesn't necessarily mean that the Koreans who had Chinese-styled surnames descended from Chinese ancestors, but it does mean that the usage of similar single-character surnames became popular during these periods. Many Chinese people also immigrated into Korea throughout Korean history and became naturalized Koreans with original Chinese surnames. Prior to this point, Koreans used unique surnames that sometimes consisted of multiple characters that somewhat resembled modern Japanese surnames. However, Korean surnames vastly differ from Chinese surnames in their diversity. China is known to have around 4,000 surnames in circulation today, while modern Korean surnames are estimated at just 286. Of these 286 surnames, Kim Lee and Park make up 45% of South Korea's population. Does this mean that Korea is just made up of 286 families? No, and I'll get into explaining why. To understand the Korean family name system, we first need to understand the concept of clans called Bonguan in Korean. This is a concept that doesn't exist in other modern East Asian cultures, and also isn't displayed in modern Korean names. Because Korean family names are limited in diversity, Koreans often need to reveal their clan names in order to find out if someone is related to them or not. Clan names usually consist of the geographical location of where the clan founder was from. For example, the Junju Lee clan, which was the royal family of the Joseon dynasty, was named after the hometown of its founder, Lee Han, from Junju. Let's look at Kim's, Lee's, and Park's. There are over 10 million Koreans surnamed Kim, with estimates to about 600 different clans. Every single one of these clans would be considered separate from each other, and thus unrelated. There are over 7 million Koreans surnamed Lee, with around 500 different clans. With Parks, there are over 4 million people with around 300 clans. So if someone from the Junju Lee clan meets another person surnamed Lee, they might ask, what clan are you from? And if they reply, I'm from the Guangsan Lee clan, they know they're not related because although their surnames are the same, they come from different clans with different ancestors. And because everyone in the same clan technically belongs to the same family, until 1996, it was illegal in South Korea for someone to marry within their own clan. So the concept of knowing one's clan and asking about other people's clans was a necessity for Koreans. It was and still is a part of their identity. Historically, Koreans often avoided courting or dating people with the same surname as themselves to avoid potential incest. Although two people with the same surname from different clans are technically unrelated, it was still socially avoided. If you look at the wives and concubines of the past kings of the Joseon dynasty, Lee was a very rare surname amongst them despite it being one of the most common surnames in Korea, and the ones that were surnamed Lee never came from the Junju Lee clan. With the concept of clans now in mind, let's go back to the first two questions of the video. Is Kim Jong-un related to Kim Nam-joon from BTS? Is IU a descendant of the royal family? Upon a quick Google search, we can see that Kim Jong-un is from the Junju Kim clan. This means that he's part of a clan whose ancestor hailed from Junju North Jala province. When we do a search on Kim Nam-joon, we can see that he's part of the Gangneung Kim clan from Gangwon province. Now we know that as their clans are different, they're not related. When we look up IU, we can see that she's from the Junju Lee clan, which is in fact the royal family of the Joseon dynasty. So technically, IU is a descendant of one of the kings from the Joseon dynasty. Does that make her royalty? Well, technically yeah. You may have noticed that I used the word technically numerous times throughout this video so far. And this is because although every Korean person is part of a clan, this is very unreliable in determining if they are legitimately a descendant of their respective clan founders. To understand why I say that, first we have to look at the history of family names in Korea. During the Joseon dynasty, Korea had a caste system similar to that of India. 
society was divided into classes. At the top of the pyramid was obviously the king. Below him were the nobility class called yangban. The yangban were exempt from paying taxes aside from property tax, and had no restrictions in attaining high-ranking government jobs. The yangban were a minority, with modern estimates ranging around 10% of the population at the time. Most, if not all, clans in modern Korea are former yangban clans. Below the yangban was a class called jungin. These guys weren't necessarily nobility, but held reputable government jobs as officials and scribes and technicians. They were also a minority caste at the time, ranging around 10% of the population. Below the jungin was a class called sangmin. These guys were regular people, ranging from artisans, merchants, and mostly farmers. They had to pay a lot of taxes to the government and were prone to being drafted into the army. There were a lot of restrictions on type of jobs they could have. Below the regular people was the chunmin, often translated as untouchables. These people belonged to the yangban or jungin as property and were largely made up of slaves, shamans, butchers, and jesters. Most importantly, they were not given proper names and did not have family names to show that they were of lower caste and belonged to a high-ranking family. The majority of the population in the Joseon dynasty was made up of the sangmin, the regular people, and the chunmin, the untouchables. While uncommon, people in the lower castes also had surnames, but they were obviously not distinguished as nobility clans. You might have caught on to why this information becomes a problem when we look at the legitimacy of Korean clans. As I stated before, many if not all clans present in Korea today claim a Yangban ancestry. So how did 10% of the nobility population end up becoming the ancestors to everyone in Korea today? Where did the remaining 90% go? To answer that question, we need to go through yet another history lesson back into the Joseon dynasty at the end of the 16th century. After the Japanese invasion of 1592, Korea was devastated with post-war turmoil. The government had no money to fix up the damages from the war and to get back on its feet. In order to raise money for the nation, the government used the caste system to its advantage. They began selling a thing called the Gongmyeong Chup, which roughly translates to blank certificate. In exchange for money or goods, people could buy these honorary government certificates to become government officials, and in turn part of the nobility class. The blank certificate would grant regular people with nobility surnames, and as a result, the numbers of the nobility class in Korea rose to 70% by the end of the 19th century. And to top it off, the remaining minority, likely the untouchables who could not afford to buy a certificate, joined the Yangban ranks in 1909 under Japanese rule, where every Korean citizen was forced to take on a surname. During this time, the people in the untouchable castes usually took on surnames of their master families. Some of the popular Yangban clans to join were the Gimhae Kim clan, the Junju Lee clan, and the Miryang Park clan. They were chosen because of their large numbers and their hierarchical caliber at the time. The large numbers were important as the smaller the clan was, the easier it was for an individual who bought their way into the clan could have become distinguished. Currently, the Gimhae Kim clan sits at the topmost populous clan in Korea with over 4.5 million members. The Miryang Park clan sits at number 2 with 3.1 million members. The Junju Lee clan, the royal family, sits at number 3 with 2.6 million members. So, it's very safe to assume that the majority of people in Korea did not actually originate from Yangban clans. This is also partly why the Korean government abolished the law where people could not marry members of their own clans because it's highly unlikely that two people in the same clan who grew up unaware of each other are actually genetically related. Because it's very difficult to distinguish who is actually of Yangban ancestry and who is not, the concept of clans does not hold as much importance today as it did in the Joseon dynasty. The caste system was abolished during the Japanese occupation of Korea, and with every Korean person belonging to a nobility clan, the former Yangban status lost much of its value and novelty. However, Korean people still distinguish themselves by their clan names and often hold clan gatherings and name their children according to the rules of their clan family tree. Many nobility family trees come with generational characters called Tolimcha, to be used in naming children for each generation. If someone has a character in their name that is also present in the names of their siblings, it is very likely that that character is their generational character. So is Ayu actually a descendant of the royal family? There's actually no way to tell. She very well could be, or she may not be at all. With the Junju Lee clan being the largest of the Lee clans, it's very likely that if you meet a Korean person surnamed Lee, they could be from this clan, and if they are, they will likely claim royal ancestry. And as far as the official records are concerned, they technically are royalty. 
With this in mind, please do understand that raising the question of if someone is actually a legitimate member of their clan is considered inconsiderate, as you would be suggesting that their ancestors were of lower social class. So the next time you meet a Korean person, ask them what clan they are from. In most cases, they will be intrigued as the concept of clans isn't usually understood by non-Koreans. Thanks for tuning in, I hope this video taught you something interesting.